Bonjour tout le monde, ça va? You ever have one of those days where you just feel pumped and on point? Today's one of those days for me, so I'm just gonna, just gonna go with it. Um, but anyway, hope you're feeling good. I'm so happy to be here with you just for a short video that we're gonna get right into. Uh, today's video, I'm going to be speaking about the top five endearing habits of French people that I've, that I've observed over the past couple of years. So let's get into it. Okay, so first up, if you're new here, I'm Diane, or en français, Diane. Um, I'm the American behind a Living Abroad Lifestyle blog, We in France, that I'll link down below. Um, I've lived out here in the Pays de la Loire region of France, out by Angers, since about 2012. And here on this channel, we talk about everyday French life and beyond. So let's get into today's video on these five endearing French habits I've noticed. Um, and we'll start with the definition. So endearing, simply put, It just means inspiring feelings of affection or admiration, or, you know, put another way, uh, cute, delightful, lovely, um, things that warm your heart. And uh, you get the point, right? So when I first came to France, I did a lot more observing than actual talking. One, I wanted to learn, and two, my French was not very good, and I had zero confidence. So I just kind of watch others around me, and I would see how they would act and speak, and just, then just try to kind of adapt to what I was seeing with them. So over the past couple of years, I picked up some of these French personality traits and habits that I find quite endearing, and to be honest, I've started doing some of them myself. So just one thing before I get into them, keep in mind that not all French people do these things, and it's always best not to put everyone in the same box. Um, they're just my observations, and it's no surprise that many of them relate to food. Okay, number one, grocery cart on wheels. There's probably some official name. If you're British, maybe you call it a trolley. And no matter how old you are, old, young, in France, in many parts of Europe as well, uh, people use these at the market and at the grocery store. And they weren't cool in New York. When I was living in New York, I wouldn't be caught dead with one of these. But um, what I'm talking about is basically one of these, a grocery shopping cart on wheels that pretty much in the US seem to be reserved for senior citizens. But in France, they're uh, really handy for people like me who live in really close proximity of a grocery store. You don't want to kill your hands with the heavy handles of a shopping bag and lugging it back home. So fill up your little trolley cart and roll it home. And they are just as fashionable as they are functional with a ton of different colors and patterns. And they run kind of they run the gamut in terms of price. So this one, as I just showed you, is from a brand named Rolser. Whoops, right here. I have no affiliation with them. Uh, they're just a brand I love. And um, young people use these just as much as the older folks. So if you want to be French, you want a grocery shop like the French, grab yourself one of these shopping trolleys. Okay, the next one is saying the word petit before everything. And petit or petite, if it's feminine, uh, literally means small or short. So in French, the word grandson is petit fils. That's the literal translation. Or if you wanted to say she's shorter than me, it's elle est plus petite que moi. So those are literal uses of, of the word petite. But... What I'm talking about here, what I find super endearing, is using petite or petit in a cutesy way. Like, oh, I'm having a petite soirée tonight with 100 people. <laughs> okay, wait a second. It's petite, but it's 100 people. They don't mean small, um, obviously. So something else, another example is, you know, you see a busy shop employee and you're like, oh, I just have a petite question. I just have a little question. And you go on for a minute rambling. Um, or, you know, even even like non cutesy men, they'll say, oh, do you just want to grab a petit café or on se fait un petit resto? You know, we're going to go out to a to a little a little restaurant, a little dinner. And it's just a really um, common word that's used, again, literally to mean small or short. But then also just as an adjective uh, before a word like a party, a restaurant, a little coffee, a little this, a little that. And I find it really endearing. Okay, this next one I absolutely love, and it ties into uh, going to the bakery. So it's the way bakery employees twist the little, oh, there I go with the little, uh, the, the brown pastry bag. So you get a bag of pastries, and what they do, instead of just folding it or clamping it or just wadding up the top and handing it to you, the employee will take each side of the bag and they kind of flip it over on themselves. I'm gonna put a little video. See, I said it again, a little. <laughs> I even do it in English. I'm gonna put a video up here um, after a recent bakery uh, visit where I'm kind of showing you the remnants of that twisted bag. So let me do that. And also the twist has come undone, but the bag is like twisted like this. It's kind of a, a special French bakery twist. I do it terribly, but um, it's just a cute little 
uh, little extra touch that I always appreciate, the little twist on the bag. Okay, so what you just saw, I call the French twist. It's the bakery style, and it's not particular to a specific region or bakery, uh, just as likely as you are to see it in Paris, you are to see it in Marseille or somewhere else. So um, it just makes me smile. Every time I see the little twist, I'm like, oh, it's my pastries. And the second favorite twist or bakery thing is the cone. And if you buy something that doesn't neatly fit in a box or bag, they kind of package it up with tape in this like pyramid shape. And I just love it. You know, I have to. Okay, next up is that whole apéro thing. Apéro is short for aperitif. And this is kind of um, takes two parts to explain. So if you've been to a restaurant in France, you've likely uh, been asked when out to dinner if you'd like an aperitif. So the waiter is asking if you'd like a pre-dinner drink, a cocktail. So martini, a kir, something that's not wine to have with dinner but a special pregame kind of drink. And they usually serve it with a little bowl of munchies, like, I don't know, cheese balls or pretzels. And, you know, you could do this at a friend's house too, but it's typically French. So when a waiter comes to you in a restaurant and they say, um, est-ce que vous voulez un apéritif ou est-ce que vous désirez un apéritif? They're not asking for your drink order at the restaurant. They're asking if you want a pre-dinner drink. And it's totally fine to say, no, thanks. I'm just going to have wine with dinner or Go ahead, go nuts. Yeah, so basically an aperitif is a drink to whet the appetite. My favorite is a Kir Royale, and it's a fancy champagne drink. So you have your sparkling wine and then you add a flavored syrup. Uh, my favorite's peach, but they do uh, strawberry, grenadine, uh, cassie, all different ones. And uh, it's excellent. So yeah, if you hear that question, be ready for it. Pretty much every restaurant, ranging from a cafe to something more fancy, the very first question they're gonna ask you is, would you like one of these pre-dinner drinks? But there's a second part to this aperitif thing. Okay, so beyond the drink of the aperitif, apéro in general is a cultural thing, and it's a little snack with that drink before your meal. And it's, again, you could say no, but it's very, very common for people to say yes. And it doesn't have to be alcoholic. So one thing, the French are not big snackers, but they are big into apéro. So it's just a warm up before your main meal. You don't eat half a bag of pretzels. You just have some little snacks in a little bowl. And uh, it's always a good warm up to a meal. It's uh, something I enjoy and I love apéro. Both the drink, the little snack time, the talk with friends and family before. All right, next up, this is a stereotype that absolutely rings true. It's that obligatory baguette. And it's last, but it's certainly not least. And the baguette love in France is real. I mean, you absolutely see people with baguettes under their arms. It's not just in the movies. It's certainly not a stereotype. Men, women, all ages, all times of day, the French really do love their baguettes. So there's a whole bunch of different kinds of baguettes anyone will do. But at peak bakery times, you'll absolutely see uh, a line out the bakery's door. And that goes, you know, in small towns as well. It's not just big cities like Paris. So whenever I see a guy riding by in his beautiful suit, beautiful tailored work suit, corporate attire, and has a baguette under his arm or poking out of the basket, um, it just makes me smile. So there's really no shame in buying a baguette or two daily. You'll fit right in. And if you don't finish your baguette, which... Probably won't be a problem, especially if there's more than one of you. You could always freeze it and they stay really well and some foil. You just pop it in the microwave whenever you need some bread. All right, everyone, that wraps up today's video on endearing habits of French people that have warmed my heart over the years or just made me notice. It's like, ooh, that's pretty cool. I like that. I'm going to take it on in my own life. And as always, be sure to subscribe if you haven't done so. Let me know down in the comments what else you'd like to see. And I'll see you right back here on We in France soon. Salut!